Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' where Jesus' body had been had been, one at the head and another at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned round and saw Jesus, Jesus standing there, but she did not realise it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener. She, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. She just said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in, Ara in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. He just said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your father to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had seen, that he had said these things to her. Well, we're here today to celebrate something very special. Of course, it is Easter and the resurrection. It is the centre of our faith. Church has been decorated and cleaned. We've got lots of lovely flowers in the church and a lot of effort does go in to the preparation of Easter. I know when I was very much involved with the Church of England, this for the choristers would have been an incredible three to four days, starting off with the Monday Thursday service where we stripped the altars then the hour or two at the cross on Good Friday, then the Easter Eve service where you light the baptismal fire, renew the baptismal vows and have the first communion of Easter. And then obviously choral evensong and obviously a choral mass during the morning at the church. So it would have been a very busy time. And of course, for some reason in the shops we've been seeing a lot of these things around in the past few weeks. And I dare say, perhaps one or two may have even been eaten before breakfast this morning. You never know. I was very tempted, but I did actually decide I would leave it till this afternoon. It's interesting that we still give eggs. And of course, before Christianity, people did give eggs at this time of the year because it was spring and it was new life. And that is really what we are celebrating today. We've been hearing about the new life that Jesus gives us. And obviously when we were told about Christianity, eggs did stay because people thought it was a good way to understand the Easter story. And of course, if you take an egg, we all know that if that was fertilised out of that would come a chick which is indeed new life. And Easter is about Jesus being alive, a new way of being alive, and making it possible for each and every one of us to be given a new life. 
in the inside of the egg we see the yellow yolk and then the clear fluid around it. I must admit I do quite enjoy a fried egg, something I don't get very often at home because my wife's on a diet, but a nice fried egg with plenty of salt and bread and butter, absolutely gorgeous for a lunch. And what is interesting is when we cook the egg, it turns into something quite different. The white liquid, the liquid becomes the white thick stuff and it's really tasty. And of course, Jesus' life from now, from the first Easter day, is different. For a start, Jesus is never going to die again. His new life isn't a life that runs out. Even though Jesus has now been alive for about 2,000 years, he has not grown older. He is outside of time. He is outside of space. So he can come and go just as he pleases. If we break the egg to cook it, you can't do anything with an egg unless it's been broken. To actually make it change, you have to break its shell. For the chick to come out, the new life to come out, it has to peck its way out of the shell. And I think that's worth remembering as well, because sometimes we want to hang on to things just as they are. We don't always want to change, even if change in our lives is for the best. Will we let our shells be broken today, ready for the new life that Jesus wants us to have? God is calling us out of our shells into a whole new different way of living. It is the loving way of living, trusting in God with our heart and soul and mind and strength and loving one another as we love ourselves. That may mean that some of our habits and fears may, like the shell, need to be broken before we can live freely in a loving way. The good news of Easter is that Jesus has already broken through death and sin. So if we hold on to him, he can bring us through the shell, breaking us out into the light and the space of day, a daylight that will indeed last forever. Amen. And if the junior church would like, they're more than welcome to eat that at the back of the church when they're doing their things. If you want to collect that when you've done your reading, Samuel, you can keep that.